Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you here today. Um, I'm really happy to be back to MageCon. So first time I, I was presenting at MageCon at uh, 2018, where essentially I introduced um, world to EC tools originally. And uh, today we'll see the perspective from like two years after that. So um, as Rina said, uh, I'm Yevgeny Pidja. I'm Senior Product Manager for Cloud at Adobe. Um, my main goal in the company is actually making our cloud infrastructure and tooling uh, the best of its kind and uh, trying to make um, the whole Magento experience in cloud the most cost effective and Magento itself highest performing and reliable way to actually deploy. But today we won't be talking about that. So today um, I wanted to introduce you to Magento Cloud tools um, two years after it was done first time. Um, a lot of things changed and uh, we progressed quite a lot in many areas. So uh, let's start with a quick overview. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with these tools already, uh, but if you are not, um, let's go um, and uh, talk about these one by one. So um, as you see, uh, all the tools are open source, uh, which is great. So we are following the I guess Magento's example, the main Magento core example, and uh, making all the tools accessible for everyone as an open source packages. And the most interesting thing, they're all cross version compatible. So um, essentially there is no one-to-one -one mapping from like Magento version to tool version. They're working with any Magento version and any flavor of it, meaning open source, commerce, or cloud. Um, one of the biggest tools is EC tools. Uh, this one is the most popular of these four, and you probably heard about that. So in our cloud, it's actually the main deployment configuration and orchestration tool. It's used on 100% of cloud projects, uh, but our goal is to actually make it um, a main deployment tool for any Magento. Essentially, we are encouraging our community and partners and developers to use it even outside of cloud, because essentially it's um, helping you to follow best practices as well as simplifying your life significantly. Magento Cloud Docker. So if you remember a few years ago, we had a um, uh, so-called Magento Dev Box, uh, which was discontinued at some point, uh, but Magento Cloud Docker actually comes in its place. So Magento Cloud Docker is an official Magento solution for um, local development environments. Magento Cloud to build a cloud-like environment on your local machine, even without using cloud. So the best thing about it is that um, it's so easy that pretty much everyone can use it. So, um, you know, our like um, non-technical teams even are using it for any testing, demos, or whatever. And uh, we're essentially encouraging you to um, get familiar with it because um, it's helping significantly to optimize any development needs inside your companies. Magento Cloud Components is uh, another one. Um, so it's a smaller module. It's a, a module which goes with EC tools, and it actually helps uh, to uh, tie together EC tools and Magento Core. So Magento Cloud Components um, provides additional functionality, which is also cross-version compatible to Magento Core, which then actually is plugged into EC tools so that EC tools can perform some advanced um, activities. For example, cache warming and similar things. And the final one is Magento Cloud Patches. So Magento Cloud Patches is an interesting package because it provides a lot of, um, I guess, different capabilities to you. So um, it allows you to automatically download any hotfixes, uh, which we are publishing on magento.com. It allows you to manage your patches easier as well as it allows you to get access to Magento support um, fixes. So essentially, this is a package which is going to be used as a main way of delivery of any hot fixes to our customers. So um, let's dive deeper into each one of these. Um, EC Tools is the main de de deployment tool for Magento, as I said earlier. So it's designed to handle installation and upgrades, as well as any deployment needs end to end. Essentially, uh, the idea is, you know, once you push the code to your remote or do something locally, EC Tools handles it end to end. Essentially, you just update your Git branch and uh, EC Tools does the rest. Um, the idea behind that is that we pretty much don't want to put uh, the hard um, 
and complex deployment procedure on your shoulders and essentially we offload it to help uh, your teams focus mainly on providing uh, best customers experiences and building actual experiences and not caring about you know the uh, deeply technical devops kind of things um, EC tools also can be heavily customized uh, to power any CI/CD pipelines, uh, which essentially means um, we provide ways to actually change all default behaviors which are bundled. So um, you can change pretty much any step. You can customize behavior on any uh, action that happens over there. And um, you, know, you can build your own scenarios, you can build your own, uh, I guess, version of this tool without forking the code and uh, actually changing the code directly, which is cool. I stopped at uh, talking about the uh, customization um, of CI/CD pipelines. So um, EC2 sells you ways of customizing your pipelines uh, without actually editing the core code of EC tools, which is an interesting concept because you pretty much can build your own scenarios or your own flows without um, forking the code and uh, actually rewriting uh, any parts of it. So you can plug into pretty much any place uh, of the scenario. And then, you know, it works as kind of an umbrella for um, other cloud tools. So EC tools uh, pulls all the other things like components, patches, Docker, and everything else. And it knows how to handle those, how to manage versions, how to make sure your Magento version is compatible, as well as how to you know, for example, for DevBox, how to deploy your Magento inside those containers, which it is spinning up. And final one, um, Magento context. So as you know, we have uh, dozens of different versions and each one of those has its own um, specific, I guess, needs. So EC tools helps to apply Magento context on top of infrastructure and the tech stack you're using. So assuming you are using different versions of PHP for different projects, different versions of database, any other technologies like Elasticsearch, EC tools will help you manage those um, effectively, meaning you will be able to see end of life of version, you will be able to see compatibility metrics and everything else. And essentially during the build and deployment process, it will notify you if anything is wrong. So it's a pretty mature tool by this time. It's 35 releases since uh, it was first release. Um, it supports 40 plus different Magento versions starting early 2.1. And then uh, like 70% of our users are on latest versions, which we see as a very great uh, example of actually people seeing value in it because uh, you know the upgrades happen mostly within a month to the latest versions. Um, the next one uh, is our Magento Cloud Docker is a dev box. Essentially, um, many of you probably got used to like managing either your own like native stack on your laptops or uh, having uh, some uh, standardized uh, solution inside your company, which was customly built. But what we are trying to do is actually help you um, get onto the standardized uh, developer environment, which can support all Magento specific flows. So Magento Cloud Docker is a community project. Um, it's, a, I guess, more, more than half of the code of Magento Cloud Docker is actually built by the community. Um, it's a further iteration of the old Magento dev box. It also um, consumes the uh, uh, Kubernetes dev box, which architects were working on and uh, connects all of those concepts together. So Magento Cloud Docker uh, has 100% EC tools compatibility. It can run pretty much everything EC tools can do. Uh, it can support any types of technologies or uh, services versions and everything else that uh, Magento supports. So on the day one of Magento release, for specifically if it's like some minor release and we are getting technology updates, uh, Magento Cloud Docker will allow you to start building everything locally, you know, in a matter of minutes. So you wouldn't need to update your local machines, tech stack, and anything else. So it pretty much does everything out of the box. It provides um, support for MFTF out of the box as well. Um, essentially, it will deploy uh, for you everything you need, uh, including uh, Selenium and everything else. Um, definitely, it uh, also works with all the technologies which are supported and compatible with Magento. And finally, 
it uh, is going to be integrated at some point into all the automatic builds and PR delivery. So what we're trying to do essentially is to unify your developer experience with environments end to end. So um, assuming uh, a local development environment, you are building your Magento installation, right? Your Magento store. And then uh, you need to test it somehow. So you can do that either locally or push it to some remote uh, testing environment. On the remote testing environment, you will have EC tools do the job and build everything for you, the same way as it's done in the Docker environment. And if you have some custom CI, you can also actually use it for the build process. So it can build your Magento over there and um, just give you a ready environment. And at the end of the day, you're pushing the same code to the production and the same tools are building everything in production. So you get an end-to-end unified experience from the point you actually edit code on your local machines to the actual production deployment. So um, I, the big plan is actually to integrate it into all the other surrounding tools, uh, like automatic builds and PR delivery. It's already done for all the cloud tooling. So any pull request into EC tools, for example, goes through this process and is tested against the cloud Docker built environments automatically uh, in our pipelines. It has only four releases, but mainly because um, it was part of EC tools at some point before it was decoupled as a community project, uh, supports 30 plus Magento versions, um, definitely supports anything that is not, not end of life, and um, it's 100% community driven project. So we have maintainers um, who are leading it, as well as our internal teams who are participating in public groomings and all the other activities. Um, components. So this one is a companion model to very tools, as I mentioned before. So it provides um, some missing context for different tools we use. Probably heard recently about um, addition of SWOT tool into the 4.1, where essentially you can uh, see the performance of um, your environments um, in uh, Magento, right? So Magento Cloud Components is one of the models which actually supplies the data uh, to the SWOT tool uh, in a way of adding you know, specific logs and specific other metrics. Um, it also integrates tighter with EC tools and Magento Core doing things like cache warm up or adding some CLI commands which are actually required for more, more advanced processes. And it's built in a familiar Magento way. So it's pretty much built as a Magento extension and um, you know, contributing to it or extending it is the same as building any other Magento extension, which is pretty easy for Magento community. Um, it can also be used as a separate, uh, I guess, tool. So essentially you can just integrate it if you need those commands or you need that functionality on top of your core, you can just use this this package without anything else. So um, it's definitely cross-version compatible as um, all of our tools um, automatically maintained by C tools if you use that. Uh, so it can be automatically updated and uh, versions are managed. And it's actually uh, pretty simple to get benefit of it if you're using the main stack or uh, your own cloud. And finally, patches. So um, this one is interesting uh, because just recently in uh, recent releases, um, the support procedure changed. So if you ever interacted with our support and got any patches from them, um, previously you probably were getting the patches from Zendesk. Um, right now, this process looks a bit differently. So uh, when support are actually fixing some um, challenges, some issues, right? Um, they will tell you the version of Magento uh, Cloud patches and Magento quality patches, which are the tools which are essentially delivering the patches. Why this is done? Um, there are a few reasons. So first, essentially, we are uh, patching some core code. Uh, we have hot fixes when we need to. And uh, previously, like support patches may not be well compatible with um, the already patched code, which is, uh, you know, done through hot fixes and other means. So now, essentially, we're making sure that anything you get from support is actually well tested and uh, compatible with cloud and everything else uh, we're delivering through other tools. So you will get at some point uh, when you contact support uh, the version of Magento quality patches uh, package and uh, just the name of the patch. And then there is just a simple config which you change and pretty much get your patches automatically installed for for your installations. Uh, this flow is really great, uh, especially if you are 
managing more than one project or more than one environment uh, because you don't need to to patch every single branch or every single environment separately. You can actually maintain just the centralized config. Assuming um, you're working for a solution partner company and um, you have many projects, you can also kind of build uh, the default packs of patches uh, and have just a centralized config which you spread across your projects. So, um, for example, some of your models need some changes, right? And uh, you can make sure this happens this way so that you don't need to maintain everything in Jira, Confluence, or any other uh, means where you track uh, your progress. So, um, cross version compatible again, auto maintained by EC tools. Um, there are nine releases of Magento Cloud patches, and in the latest few releases, Magento Quality Patches support was added. If you see, um, Essentially, all the tools share a very similar vision. Um, so we're trying to build open set of tools and um, we're trying to drive better developer experience, make sure it's secure and reliable, as well as lower the cost of implementation for you. Um, we want to try to, to take away maintenance uh, so that you don't actually need to think about tech stack or similar things a lot. So. Um, you can uh, you, you can be more sure that your magenta works just fine with all those versions uh, which we recommend and uh, you can use the tools to actually um, speed up the project development um, all these tools can be used independently by the most part ec tools is like you know the umbrella one it can it requires uh, other components but everything else can be used independently so you can use patches independently or components independently or devbox independently it can work with any flavor of magento like open source commerce or cloud so you pretty much can use it uh, anywhere you want it works with all those magento versions as i mentioned before and best works as bundles so even though you can use them separately it's ideal to have all of them working together because of all the synergies I mentioned before. So um, at this point, um, if you got excited about the functionality it provides, you probably still think like what's in it for you. So how to actually get benefit of all these features and uh, how to incorporate it into your day-to-day -day life. So we'll start from simple, uh, uh, I guess, use cases to more complex use cases and go um, uh, through some of these packages. Um, so as I, yeah, yeah, as I mentioned, they can all be used independently, but uh, best value is as bundle. And um, we'll start uh, reviewing a few use cases where you can use separate packages independently and what you get from there, and we'll finish with actual EC tools implementation and the biggest benefits you can get from like using the whole thing together. Um, so, for example, let's look at these four components once again and uh, see uh, what can you use right today. So EC tools um, can manage your build deployment optimization processes. It can uh, ensure cloud compatibility um, if you are, for example, developing extensions or developing projects which have some um, uh, potential to go to cloud at some point as well as it manages cloud production. So if you are developing on cloud, even if you didn't know about that, EC tools is there. If you are not developing on cloud, um, you know, it's used in other places like uh, extension validation processes and similar activities. And uh, it's definitely out there, uh, but you may not have heard about it before. Uh, Magento Cloud Docker uh, powers your local development. It powers the CI. It powers the PR delivery processes and helps you to run compatibility testing again. So if you run your extension uh, tests against Magento Cloud Docker, you can be sure it will work on cloud. So that means, you know, uh, if, for example, you're submitting extensions to marketplace, uh, you need to make sure they are cloud compatible because it's one of, uh, one of those requirements, right? Uh, Magento Cloud Docker can help you simplify this process. You don't need to even run actual cloud environments. You can just test against Magento Cloud Docker and be sure it works. Components, um, again, cloud test and cloud production, it's uh, less used uh, by itself, um, but it definitely helps to optimize um, any cloud-related processes. And Magento Cloud Patches, this is an official patches distribution. At this point, um, 
It helps with all the production matters, but can be used um, by even on-premise customers for uh, actually uh, simplifying their patch applying procedures. So let's look uh, at the Magento Cloud Patches first. So we call it Simplify Patches because essentially you get three main benefits. You can apply available support patches. Um, we have just simple configurations which support will um, onboard you to first time you actually request any patch from them. Um, you can manage patches via configuration files. So a single configuration file can be promoted between environments. It can be moved um, back and forth and actually uh, provide the same experience and uh, you can build patch bundles for your project and redistribute re them between different projects. Then Magento Cloud Docker, so uh, development and testing uh, in a unified way. You can standardize baseline tech stack with your development team. For example, you're onboarding new tech, uh, uh, tech members, um, developers to your team. You can just, you know, distribute the pre-built configs uh, to them and uh, they can build environments in a matter of minutes. They won't need to, to go through the whole setup process and uh, actually spend days for it. Um, then tech stack updates as soon as core is uh, core updates are added. So essentially 2.4 comes out, for example, you get MariaDB 10.4, um, Magento Cloud Docker supports it on, that, on day one. You don't need to figure out how actually to integrate it in your current tech stack. Uh, customized project needs, um, uh, and environment. So essentially, if you have uh, some need to customize your uh, environment on top of what Cloud Docker provides, you can effectively do that. Um, and uh, it's very extensible and uh, customizable. So there are many places where you can do like, you know, where uh, regular Docker ways like uh, Docker Compose overrides or similar things. So it, it's all supported out of the box. Um, it can run MFTF tests for you. So if you don't have actual CI on your site, which you use for um, automated testing, you can use it locally to run some specific tests. Definitely you won't run hundreds of tests um, locally, uh, but you can run those which are most critical for the functionality you are testing or your own test, for example. And guaranteed compatibility with all Magento setups. So we pretty much say that, you know, if you're using Magento Cloud Docker, um, your implementation will work anywhere, regardless if you're developing a store or extension or any other customization like Seam or anything else. So if tested against Magento Cloud Docker, you will actually be able to validate um, your implementation against everything you may imagine. Yevgeny, you know that we have five minutes left until your presentation, then we're, we're gonna head to the Q&A. So please make sure to wrap up. Thank you. Yeah, sure, no, thank you. Uh, we have just a few slides left. So uh, unified configuration and uh, deployment uh, by EC tools. So, as I said, EC tools will pull all those other packages uh, and bundle them together, and it will orchestrate what those extensions do. And essentially it will form a kind of you know, unified experience across those things. So it will allow you to do simple configuration management across environments. It uh, has uh, more than 30 different variables which you can tune and uh, customize to your needs, you know, manage your themes, manage your static content, manage uh, those kind of areas. So once the configuration file is promoted back and forth between different environments, um, you actually get the repeatable and reproducible builds and deploy processes. Essentially, if you are submitting the same uh, Git code with the same EC tools config, EC tools will make sure that the deployment happens in exactly the same way as it happened in your other environments. So you won't uh, be able to miss anything or have some different unexpected issues coming up over there. Um, it also builds and deploy, uh, deploys your Magento according to the best practices. So we make sure that uh, all the Magento best practices are actually uh, followed here. So it will uh, configure things right. It will help you to not miss, you know, the configs you, you need to do, and it will actually guide you through those best practices if needed. Simple upgrades and tech stack compatibility checks. So, you know, it will, it, it will help you to upgrade for, for example, from 2.1 to 2.4. Um, as long as your code is compatible, you know, extensions and themes, uh, EC tools will, da will do the rest of core upgrade procedures. So if you're missing some kind of composer directive or something like that, uh, which were introduced in latest versions, uh, EC tools will, will let you know that essentially that is missing. 
And the final one is a scenario-based uh, build and deployment processes, uh, which is essential as a customization flow for Magento EC tools. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll talk a bit uh, about it on the next slides. So um, any custom scenarios, essentially, whatever you may think of, uh, you want to build, uh, it's likely already supported. So we have uh, 30 plus pre-built steps, uh, which are grouped in four default scenarios, which were run by default. And uh, actually it's more than enough for most customers and most uh, developers. Uh, we have other 30 plus variables, which can modify behaviors and actually change the way that deployment operates. But if it's not enough and you want to actually change something or customize it heavily, as there is a concept of scenario-based deployments, which helps you to um, add, remove, move, or replace any steps in default scenarios. So um, two years ago, it was a kind of black box, uh, which you couldn't modify. Right now, it's an open source code, which you can heavily customize the way you do it with Magento. It's a very familiar way, so also uh, like, uh, you know, um, XML uh, context scenarios, which you just pass to your uh, build or deploy CLI commands, and then it actually uh, merges uh, the default behaviors with your customizations and makes sure everything runs smoothly. So it's a great feature. Um, if you haven't uh, seen it before, please uh, get familiar with it. Uh, on DevDocs, it's very well covered. And finally, uh, the final slide is about evolution of cloud tooling. I just wanted to make sure, um, you know, if you are hearing about it for the first time, don't worry. Uh, and actually, you know, you're, you're, you, you can use it right now. So it's a very mature tool. Uh, it first was created in September 17th and it was developed uh, for another maybe half a year before that. Uh, but now it's pretty much three years old and you see this huge uh, story of how it was changing over time. So we were, uh, merging code over decoupling code and uh, you know those new packages were coming up over time um, right now it's a very uh, I guess community uh, focused community driven project so whatever comes next um, we'll be happy to work with all of you on uh, making it better and actually getting it close to what you need for your uh, specific needs so uh, how to get familiar with tools um, We've got two community Slack channels, one cloud, one cloud Docker. Um, we have 1,600 participants on cloud and 320 on uh, cloud Docker. So as you see, we have a, a pretty huge community for these tools. Uh, hopefully you are already on those channels. If you are not, uh, please join. And at the bottom of the page, uh, just please make a screenshot. It's uh, our um, Spark URL for our um, community demos. So, our team is running uh, demos every week or every other week, and we are showing um, all the cool new things uh, we have. So community members join us for some of those uh, talks uh, to present uh, uh, their achievements in this area. Um, but um, yeah, definitely we'll be happy to see you there. And wrapping up, uh, I guess we are ready to, to go into Q&A. Yes, we are. Thank you, Evgeny. It was very timely. Um, we have two questions, too. One of them is quite shorter, I guess. Uh, does Magento Cloud Docker work on Windows? Yes, it does. So it uh, works uh, mainly if you run the, um, uh, I don't remember how it's exactly called, Windows subsystems for Linux, I guess, WSL. WSL. So. Um, if you if you join Magento Cloud Docker channel and ask it, there so the right guys who actually run it on Windows this way, and they were helping us to actually make it compatible with Windows to work it, uh, for it to work seamlessly. Um, originally, it was built for Mac, uh, but over time we made sure it works with all uh, three most popular systems: Mac, uh, Windows, and Linux. So. Um, by default, we pretty much uh, support all three systems right now. Um, on the dev docs, there are some uh, commands for specific systems. Uh, what needs to be done over there? Um, if anything, you know, uh, in the documentation for the steps you should run. But in general, yes, it does support Windows. Thank you very much. We have another question. It's quite long. I'm going to read it out all. Um, there's a question regarding changes deployment to Magenta Cloud infrastructure. Deployment is done by pushing to JIT and all, in all the environment for this branch is being rebuilt, which takes significant time. In the case of only front-end changes are being deployed, we have to wait. However, only sets up static contacts. Uh, deploy, deploy is expected. 
Is there a way to customize this deployment, some kind of front-end only changes deployment, which will only compile the assets but will not rebuild everything? Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a really good question. So, um, by default, default scenarios don't support that, uh, but uh, definitely with scenario-based deployments, I think it's achievable. So, we've had uh, at least one customer I know about who actually did something similar. So, what they, what, what they were doing, they were um, actually kind of uh, when you are pushing changes, uh, they were analyzing what kind of changes came in, and essentially, uh, we uh, scenario-based deploys. Uh, it was defining if you need to re to rebuild the whole thing or you need to actually just update the static contents, uh, which are out there. It's though at this point a customization, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, uh, if you are really interested in uh, pushing this thing forward. Uh, feel free to, to create the GitHub, you know, feature request um, on one of those repositories, which I mentioned before, probably CTOOLS one. Uh, our community maintainers, our team will actually pick it up and uh, uh, discuss with you on one of the community groups how to better design it and make it happen. So we're very open to, uh, to such kind of proposals uh, because, you know, we want the tools to work best in a wild, uh, in the actual real, real world environments and not on a paper only. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely happy to work with you to, to show, to actually, you know, help you do that, or if it's not possible to make sure we're moving in that direction. Thank you, Evgeny. And we have one more question uh, that appeared in the new Magento quality patches tool. Uh, is it available for Magento commerce only or for the open source edition as well? And why not? <laughs> Um, actually, it shouldn't be why not. It's actually available. It's uh, yeah, it's definitely available. You can install um, Magento Cloud Patches uh, package by itself without EC tools, without Cloud Docker, without Cloud components. And uh, on DevDocs, there is actually even a description how to do that. So there is a flow for Magento Commerce only or open source to install the package, and uh, it explains uh, how to install that. So um, the only caveat, though, uh, like um, for for open source, I think, is that like uh, support is a, a commerce feature, right? So uh, patches that are bundled into the package are by the most part uh, from uh, commerce customers. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is no restriction on using all those patches. And mainly, you know, uh, the package already contains all the like P1, P2 tickets, uh, which are coming in. So um you definitely can use it outside of cloud and uh, we not only say we, you can do that we encourage you to do that thank you Evgeny. Uh, our time's up for this session we right right now we have five minutes left for a break for you for everyone to reconnect to the next sessions we still have two questions that were asked here Vladislav Smirnov and Stanislav Diluk I strongly encourage you to reach out to Evgeny and ask your question uh to him in private and also head to the chat rooms this is a place where you also can ask your questions and discuss the topics. It's very nice to see that you really enjoyed the presentation. Evgeny, thanks a lot. Thank uh, you very much. So enjoy, enjoy the match conf and see you in the next tracks. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. Bye.